Okay, so today we're going to be talking about poo. Around the world there's millions of tonnes of poo, faeces, urine, excreted by animals, plants, humans, all over the world. Millions of tonnes. Where does it go? In towns and cities, it goes down, drainage pipes, treated, and then the water's put back that way. Places like here, in small villages, hamlets, where there isn't main uh, drainage, it's got to go somewhere. So, let's follow where it goes. Okay, so that was from the toilet in there. There's a sink in the kitchen, another sink in the toilet, shower, toilet upstairs, another sink, another bathroom over there in that toilet with a sink. That all needs to go somewhere. That side of the house, there's a pipe that comes underground and feeds into this manhole. Everything this side feeds into another manhole along here. It all connects in here. So all the waste products are in this one manhole goes through one pipe straight into this tank here, which I'll have a quick look at. So, bearing in mind that all waste products come into here, not only faeces and urine, but dishwasher, shower, any water you use, and on average humans use about 300 litres of water every single day. In here is where all of that waste product goes. And you can see, we have a quick point. That pipe there is the main pipe feeding all of the waste in. So all the waste comes in here. And you see there's quite a lot of movement in the tank. This pipe here is feeding in air. The reason the air's coming in is to feed the type of microorganism responsible for breaking down all of this waste. We're not talking about fungi, we're not talking about viruses, we're talking about bacteria. The air that feeds in gives the bacteria oxygen, so it's aerobic conditions. As a result, that breaks down all the different waste products into different parts. We have another quick look on the edge. We've got this scummy layer here. That's pretty much all the solids that have been separated. So that's pretty much poo, feces. In here we've got all the liquid that's broken down. After it's been treated by the air and the bacteria that break it down, it's then fed that way into another area, which has another tank, and that's just called a soak away. It just soaks away into the ground. So that's where it goes. It's not used for anything. It's just shut back into the land. However, we could use that for something more productive. On average, a human produces about 0.8 kilograms of poo feces every single day. If we use 10 kilograms of that as uh, fuel, we can actually power a fridge for 24 hours. So, instead of just having a tank that looks like this, we have something different, um, which digests it all, but actually uses the gases that come off, because when the bacteria breaks everything down, it releases methane. Methane we can use um, for gas for cooking, uh, fuel for powering your fridges, um, and other means of appliances within the house. So if every person produces about 0.8 kilograms a day of feces, we only need 10 kilograms to power a fridge for 24 hours. So a family of four, in one week, they would make around 20, 25 kilograms of uh, dry dung that could then power a fridge for two days, just from a family of four. So you think about our whole village, how much that could be used for. The only difference with this tank and those sort of tanks is that it doesn't need the air hose, so it can be anaerobic. It still has the digester that separates the liquid from the faeces. And all you do is catch the methane that's released off. At the moment, it's just going straight back into the atmosphere. If you actually catch that off, you can then pipe that down and use it elsewhere. And also, the slurry, the actual uh, bits that uh, sort of in this tank collect around the outside, you can put that back onto your land and use fertiliser, so nothing's wasted. Um, 
So that's one use, biogas, we can use the methane to power all your appliances. Also, if you put another type of microorganism in there, fungi, if you let that break down in aerobic conditions, that can produce um, something in microprotein, similar to corn. So if you let it break everything down, it produces protein that we can then eat. So you can actually eat human and animal waste every day, and it's a good source of protein, pretty much similar to corn and other meat-free products like that. Um, 